Hey guys, what's up? This is T-Bones Tech, and this video we're going to show you guys how to shoot HDR photos, and I'm going to break it down and explain it, and I'm actually going to show you how guys how to process the image on your computer, because if you don't have any image processing, then it's actually going to do you no good, because you're going to have two pretty bad photos uh, to work with. So you're just going to turn your uh, digital SLR on, just like this, and then what you're going to do is you're going to have to uh, have it on one of these modes uh, right here, um, one of these top modes right there. You're going to want it on those. These probably won't work because you need to change your exposure. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to hit this Q right there, and then it's going to bring up this, and what you're going to want is you're going to want to click right on here. So we're just going to click on that right now. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, this uh, button right here, I forgot the name of it exactly, and you're going to bring it uh, to the right, and then it's going to bring up three of these things, and you can move them. So this is going to be a dark uh, picture, so an underexposed. Uh, this is going to be uh, normal, and then it's going to be an overexposed. And sorry for the terrible um, hand work right now, because I am actually holding my iPhone to film it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to focus it and then hold down it and then it's going to take three pictures. Uh, so as you guys saw, so let's go back. So here is the overexposed picture. Here is the uh, probably the underexposed picture. And here is the um, middle exposed picture. Okay, so now we're just going to jump into um, my Mac and show you guys how to process them. And I'm going to show you guys what the uh, software that I use uh, to process these image. And I'm actually going to use the exact images that I just took uh, with this camera that I'm shooting on. And let's do Alright, so I'm just going to put the SD card in right now. So I just plugged it in and then once it should pop up that we have an SD card. Um, so I have a camera window on here, and once that uh, loads up, I'm just going to uh, get rid of it because uh, we are not going to be using that program uh, to do anything, but it <laughs> pops up every time uh, to try to import the photo, so we're just going to force quit that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up um, your uh, SD card, and then um, you're going to click on here, click on here, and wherever your photos are at, those are where my photos are actually stored at. So what we're going to do is grab these pictures right here. So that is the first one. And then grab these also. Um, because those are the three pictures that we took. So then after that, we are going to go into uh, the image processing that, I was, that I've been using. And that is called PhotoMax Pro. So I'm actually just going to uh, load that up right now on... Uh, my search engine. Alright, so I just type that in. I'm going to bring it over to this desktop right here. Alright, um, and here we go. So this is the software, this is the website. I'm going to uh, link it down in the description um, to for where you can download it for free. Um, and just for you guys to see if you like it or not, it will leave a watermark if you do not uh, buy it that says Photomax Pro or something like that. Um, so that can be annoying, but you can use, um, you can license it for a $100 um, if you have some really good photos. And there's other different things you can use, but this one is probably one of the best uh, that there is. So, with that being said, we are going to open up PhotoMax Pro, and we're going to continue trial since we don't have the license yet. And I'm not quite ready to spend that $100 price tag. Uh, we're going to find those three images that I had right there. We're just going to select them. We're going to hit load, we're going to hit OK, um, and we're just going to leave it with these default settings right now. So uh, we're going to load it up, and unfortunately I can't show you guys on my second monitor over here. Um, so it's going to look a little cramped on my desktop since I'm using my 13 inch uh, Mac um, and that I just hooked to my monitor. So once these uh, images are done loading up, and I guess it's merging them right now. And then it's going to show you a sample. So actually I'll show you guys. This is what it, this is what the HDR image looks like. Right here it popped over to my uh, other, my monitor. Um, and then there's different uh, ways you can set it. So different modes or whatever you want. Um, so that's just one example of them. 
Uh, this is a picture of my box. <laughs> I have boxes on the wall of stuff that I have. Um, so, as you guys can see, HDR is very versatile. You can do a lot of with it, a lot of creative stuff, make it look like paintings. It's really cool. Um, of course, this is just a sample image. It does not look good at all. Um, but get out there, take some pictures of lighthouses or buildings and skies, because I took a couple of those, and those look up pretty good. Um, so thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do hit that like button down below. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments down below. If you guys have any software that you like over this one, because this is pretty expensive, if you don't want to have that watermark, um, leave it down in the comments below. I'm interested to see what you guys have, um, and of course you guys can change, or you can change all these, you know, information, lighting and adjustment, all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Peace.